Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Forget the Art. I am so excited you are here. It has been a long time since we have arted together and I am really sorry about that, but I am really excited to get back into our projects. Today we are studying Miss Georgia O'Keefe. She is an artist. She was born in Wisconsin, not too far away from where my dad was born actually. Um, my cousins used to live in the town that she grew up in. Um, but she's known for her skyscrapers, her desert paintings from the Southwest, as well as her close-up flower pictures. Um, and so we are going to do a couple paintings. I'm gonna do a couple paintings. These are my reference photos. I will link them below. I got them on pixabay.com. I'll also put them over on the blog if you want to check them out and try these yourself. These are the ones that I found. I love flowers, but so many of the flowers that we think of are the ones that bloom in the spring and the summer. I feel like the winter flowers get cheated. So the point set is the amaryllis, the Christmas cactus. And so I thought I'd give them a little love and respect in a watercolor painting and also celebrating Miss Georgia O'Keeffe. So now she used other mediums besides watercolors, but since this is a medium that is it was what she was most known for, as well as a medium that maybe too many aren't so crazy about, um, I thought we'd go there. It's also a pretty easy medium for as far as cleanup and things like that. So if you've got little kids, it's generally cheap, inexpensive, and it can be a lot of fun. For those of you who are not huge fans of watercolors, I have got some tips and tricks that I can help you with that too. Because trust me, I was not a huge fan of watercolors up until about um, know, a couple years ago. And the more I play with them, the more I'm actually enjoying them. So what are the supplies that you're going to need for this project? Well, first of all, it's going to be paper towels. You guys know I am horrible at remembering this one supply, so I'm mentioning it first. You're going to need a cup and some water. And in fact, with watercolors, you may want two cups or more. Many artists will use one cup as their dirty cup to wash out their brushes, and then one or two clean ones so that you can dip your brush in there, get nice clean water, and then get your colors. Whatever you choose to do, those are some recommendations. So you'll need that. You will need tape in order to tape down the paper, okay? When the, the watercolor paper is designed to hold water, but just like any paper, once it gets wet, especially as it's drying, it can buckle, it can kind of warp. And so taping it down to a surface and allowing it to dry is going to help you. Now you can do that to any surface. I've mentioned these boards before. They are coated with like a PVC kind of coating and they are great for any kind of arting, but especially great for watercolor painting, okay? Now you don't have to um, uh, tape it down depending upon what you're using. Um, you know, this is the paper that I'm using. It's a Canson watercolor. It's really good. It's 140 pounds um, and it's really, really thick. It's got a little bit of a texture. There's cold press and there's a hot, you know, warm press. This is cold press. Cold press pa paper has a little bit of a, um, a texture to it, whereas um, warm press um, hot press does not, it's more smooth. Um, you know, everything is, is preference to the artist, so pick what you want. Um, you can use a mixed media pad. This is the one that I have been using um, that you guys know I've been using. This is kind of my watercolor sketchbook. Um, and so you can certainly use a, um, uh, you know, something like this. This is 110 pounds. I wouldn't go less than that. This I get over at Hobby, or I got at Hobby Lobby, and it's worked out really nicely, okay, for different things that I've been doing um, with that. So there's what I would do there. Uh, you'll need brushes, paper, um, and then of course you're going to need watercolors. Now, you can do the cute little cakes. They are awesome. I love these. This is usually what I use. Um, up until recently, I've been playing around with some other things. They're great for blending. These are perfect. Even here, you can mix on the opposite side, so you can mix around with your colors. Um, you know, and then you have an assortment of your colors. All right, so you can get name brand, you can get the Crayolas. Crayolas work great. The pigment in some of these name brands um, or the store name brands, this is like the Hobby Lobby version, either one of these. 
they are wonderful and I have gotten some absolutely gorgeous um, watercolor paintings out of these all right so this is a great option um, depending upon what you want to do all right other options for watercolors are here so these are the two that I am using in the um, photos the paintings that I'm doing today okay the first one is going to be done in watercolor pencils if you are if you like watercolors or you wish you could like watercolors but you find them very frustrating because they are so you know loosey-goosey willy-nilly you may want to try these watercolor pencils I can't suggest these highly enough this is what I have been playing with a lot lately in my own sketchbooks um, and I have actually been having a lot of fun I just got these this was one of my gifts to myself prior to that I have been using this again Hobby Lobby 50% off these are Prismacolor watercolor pencils you can bit this is a 36 count you can get them in, in more or in less um, numbers obviously the prices will differ Crayola has some watercolor pencils okay so if you like watercolors but you don't like how crazy they can get on you try these they are so much fun so essentially I'll grab this again you draw that them out you know I sketch this out with a pencil you color them in you'll see what I'm doing in my in my drawing you color them in just like you would color pencils and then you go over them with water it's phenomenal you still have to pay attention and not let them run into each other a little bit but um, the results I have found so far have been amazing the blending everything absolutely amazing can't recommend these highly enough okay so for the I hate to say it but the control freaks out there like me who you know need a little bit more control there's that then there are these these um, are watercolors they come in tubes with it you will need a palette which they can stay in um, and then you can mix your colors here but these are phenomenal they're so rich and creamy you can I find for me they kind of I can control the pigment or the amount of paint that I'm getting onto my paintbrush a little bit better than I can maybe with the cakes um, but these are a lot of fun again if you're really into watercolors and you want to try taking it up to another level you may want to try these so without further ado I will go ahead and show you what I have done and talk a little bit about what I've done with my other two projects and I'll see you on the other side okay guys so for the video I started out or for this painting I guess I started out by loosely sketching out the poinsettia leaves um, I started if you can see on my reference photo I started gritting it out and then I realized you know what I'm just painting a flower <laughs> not too many people are going to be checking my reference photo to make sure that every leaf is perfect and you know perfectly sized and everything else and so I just decided to just have some fun and go with it and that's one thing that you might want to remember too if you tend to be a little bit more of a perfectionist or if your kids do too when you're dealing with things like flowers or just having fun and sketching you know I know a lot of times you talk about perspective and proportions and things like that but the most important thing I think is to just get in there and do it now I'm using my reference photo to kind of get my shadows right get my colors right and to kind of get an idea of what um, is is going on but it's not about making sure that it's perfect remember what we've talked about before and I have to remind myself of this there is no such thing as perfection um, it's all about having some fun making some memories getting creative now if you can see I'm using the watercolor pencils with this um, piece um, I really am liking playing around with these watercolor pencils um, my teacher was the one who actually introduced me to them and there's a few different ways that you can use them okay one way is like you're seeing me use here um, I'm putting the colors down using a variety of different shades of red to get the veins to get the shadows and whatnot in and then going over it with some plain water um, it reminds me of some of those 
painting books that we had as kids. I had them anyway, you probably did too. Where the paint is already on there, all you need to do is just use the water and it kind of ignites the color and it looks like this beautiful painting. That's kind of what this reminds me of. The one thing I do like about it is, um, you know, especially sometimes I do get a little frustrated with watercolors, um, the way that they blend, if I don't want them to, or sometimes the colors just don't blend quite right. This allows me the time to get that blend down and play around with it and then put the color down. I also love the vibrancy of the colors. Um, because the pigment is right there so when I add the water especially if I control the amount of water that I'm using those colors are just big and bright and beautiful whereas a lot of times watercolors tend to dry lighter than the color that you put it down when you're using the cakes or even the um the creamy colors from the tubes this I don't know it doesn't seem to do that um, the second way you can use it is where you've seen me do a couple times where to really get those shadows in while that space is still wet I go right in with the watercolor pencil it puts down a ton of pigment and can really help punch out some of those uh, shadows that um, that you want in that flower um, and the third is to uh, dip my paintbrush into the water and then touch the tip of the um, of the uh, pencil and then put that down so it loads up the pigment right onto the um, pencil. Either way, any way that you do it is totally okay. Um, I've learned and played around with all three methods, um, but I have to say I really am enjoying these um, color pencils and uh, watercolor pencils. And so if this is something that you maybe you like the way that watercolors look, but you've been frustrated over the years with how they blend together, you may want to try this. Uh, to get my background, I'm going in with a great big brush and blending in some kind of creamy colors. Now, for the other, this one, I am going to use these um, creamy colors now. I have this full video as a little bit of a tutorial. I am giving myself a little bit of a challenge with this one. If you choose to use the or see the full um, tutorial that will be available on the blog, um, you can... Um, you, you can see that there, but I talk a lot more about, you know, how I go about uh, doing watercolors when you're using either the cakes or um, these creamy tubes that I'm using here. Um, this one, I get, again, I gave myself a challenge for one hour max. Um, I did not block out anything. I could have blocked out that white either with some... Um, uh, some crayons or um, you know some of the medium that I have that you can put down that kind of saves the white space um, I did not use any of those with it I figured um, I would just trust myself to just go with it I wanted a looser um, uh, painting here and so that was what I was going with I have a couple different shades of red um, two shades of green, a light green and a dark green, um, and I'm using um, also like a yellow ochre for some of those, um, you know, the stamens, the pistols. Uh, I think I got a Payne's Gray in there too to kind of get some of those um, stamens and pistols kind of separated out. Uh, and then for the background, I used a rose and magenta. Now these are all um, uh, which ones are they? They're Master Touch watercolors. I really like them. Um, I'm hoping to start upgrading some of my watercolor materials um, to maybe some more name brands um, because I do really like the way watercolors um, turn out. And the more I play with them, the more I'm learning how to make them work for me. And that's one thing that I will say, the more that you play around with the different materials, whether it is pencil, colored pencil, crayon, markers, um, watercolors, acrylics, oils, whatever it is that you enjoy using, the more you play around with it, the better that you are going to get at them. And that's just the bottom line. Um, 
it really is, I don't want to say practice makes perfect, but practice definitely makes improvement. It, it you know, you're going to see improvement every time you play around with it. Now, you know, maybe every time it doesn't turn out to be a masterpiece. I can certainly say that about myself. There are times where my paintings or my sketches or, you know, what have you don't turn out the way that I really had hoped that they would. But every time I do it, I'm learning something. And for me, what I have to remind myself is that I am not really doing the art um, you know, so that it winds up in a museum. We, I, and I think I've, you know, mentioned this before. I do it because I truly enjoy it. I do it because there are people who tell me that they truly enjoy when I, um, you know, the, the, the things that I make. Um, and, you know, that just helps to reinforce that when I'm doing this, um, you know, that this is maybe something that I'm really supposed to be doing. That really helps and um, gives me the encouragement to keep going on. Um, it helps me to escape everyday life. It's relaxing for me. I, I always say this is kind of my therapy and it's cheaper than going to a therapist. Um, it just helps me to have, you know, that thing that I do um, every day uh, to just, you know, relax me and help me to get away for a little while. Um, and it's fun too. The, uh, um, you know, and hopefully by doing it, it will help to encourage creativity in your life, in your kids' lives, in, um, you know, in all sorts of stuff. There are so many benefits to doing art, you know, maybe not necessarily every day, but on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, for me, trying to remember to make sure that I make the time to do it with my kids. Um, is going to help them to be a more well-balanced student and a well-balanced person. And here they are. These are my two projects. I love how different they are. I love how they both turned out. It's just fun and um, yeah, I really like the way that these turned out. Um, there's plenty of mistakes in each one of them. Um, you know, definitely stuck my hand or smudged some of them. I mean, that's just sometimes what happens. But the biggest thing is just taking that time, um, making something amazing, making some wonderful memories, getting those creative juices flowing, enjoying the time that you have and uh, the time you have with your kids, the time maybe you have with yourself. Maybe you're doing this for yourself and this is your you time. Um, just take that time to do something fun and creative. Doesn't have to be a poinsettia or an amaryllis. Doesn't have to be a flower. Um, could be a desert scene. Could it be a skyscraper? Could be something completely different. Um, but I hope you do it. I hope you have fun and I hope you enjoy all of it. I can't wait to see you the next time. Next week's project is going to be pretty awesome. We're going to be doing some sculpture and I am looking forward to that too. Can't wait to see you next time. Happy arting everyone.